Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are having a blessed Sunday. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you that we are moving our 2 p.m. 30-minute service to channel 58 at 12 p.m., okay? That'll be the beginning of October, the first Sunday of October. I hope to see you there. Have a great service. Let us pray. Father, we humbly approach that throne of grace and mercy. We are thankful for this day when we can come together and worship you and build one another up. Thank you for the design of a local group of believers who can collectively sing songs, study your word, and petition thee through the avenue of prayer. Also, on the first day of the week, we will partake of the Lord's Supper to remember that great sacrifice on our behalf. Lord, we cannot comprehend this sacrifice, but let each of us live in such a way as to honor the price that was paid on our behalf. Father, we ask for strength and wisdom each day to do thy will. We are human beings that come with faults and weaknesses. We want to be the light to the world around us and share the joy within us as we have opportunity. Please forgive us when we have sinned against thee and place it on our hearts to forgive those that have wronged us. Father, be with us as we enter into this period of worship. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. My Lord has garments so wondrous fine And myrrh their texture fills Its fragrance reach to this heart of mine With joy my being thrills Thank you so much for joining us today. In just a few moments, we'll be partaking of the Lord's Supper. You know, in several places in the Bible, the account is given of that final time that Jesus had with his disciples in the upper room. And it was based on the Old Testament Passover, as, as you may know. The unleavened bread was there in the room with them, and the fruit of the vine, what we would call grape juice, um, was also there. And it wasn't an occasion to celebrate and have a good time. It wasn't a social gathering as much as it was a somber event, but also a time to remember 
the Old Testament exodus, when the Jews were preparing to leave their slavery in Egypt. And the Lord's plan, of course, was to uh, take that occasion and um, remind us and instruct us to now partake of the Lord's Supper, not the Passover Supper, not the Passover Feast, but it was his because the Passover um, unleavened bread, he said, now represents his body. And the, the wine, the fruit of the vine that they had there with them, represents his blood, not the lamb's blood on the doorpost, as it did in the story of the Exodus. So as we recall, we remember the Lord's Supper, as we call it. Uh, we recall his last evening before he would go, and you know, Judas would betray him with a kiss, and he would be taken by soldiers and a mob that went out by night to get him and um, give him a, a mock trial, essentially, and put him before Pontius Pilate, and then he was to be sentenced to death by crucifixion. So as we partake of this, we not only remember his terrible death and his betrayal by a friend, but we also remember looking forward that it's that blood that saves us. It's that blood that takes away our sins. It wasn't his guilt, but it was our guilt. So at this time, we want to remember the body and the blood as we partake of these emblems. Let's give thanks for the bread. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much that we have this feast to celebrate. And it's not that it's a, a great meal, but it is a time to remember the body of your son suspended on that cross. And he was faithful until death on that cross. Please bless us all as we remember your son at this time. In Jesus name, amen. Let's give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Likewise, Father, we remember the blood that was spilled by your son on that cross. Such a terrible time and such a brutal way of, of ending his life. But also that blood gives us hope because it's the blood that cleanses us from our sins. We ask that you bless us now as we remember him as we partake of this fruit of the vine. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
celestial ball on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown Chapter 8, verses 8 through 10, from the New King James Version. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables that, Seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Hi, my name is Zachary Ford, and I'm coming to you from the Franklin Church of Christ here in Franklin, Tennessee. Family, I'm glad that I could be back with you. Uh, I had COVID. I'm so glad that I could be out of the house. Family, if I was you, I would put the mask back on, you know, (laughs) just stay safe if you can and do what you got to do. But thank you for your prayers. Continue to keep my family in your prayers. Um, Let us continue to strive forward. Uh, dealing with God's word, uh, suffering for the cause of Christ, and making sure that people know that life is fragile. It's out of your control for a lot of things. And so the closer we are to God, the better. Now, family, as we get into God's word today, and I appreciate the brother that read scripture, we have to understand some things. 
As we've been studying some of the things about the afterlife, we're looking to study more things about our families and how we can live more Christian lives in our homes and have our homes uh, more in line with Christ and God's will. What we need to make sure that we are paying attention to is this concept of listening. You know, listening has some responsibility to it. And there's some passages in the Bible that are pretty familiar. I know my grandmother used to tell me about some, you know, preachers that say it a lot, but he who has ears, let him hear. All right. If you turn to Luke chapter eight, that's where I want to come to. But you have probably heard it in Matthew. Uh, some of the things that I also want to make sure that we understand as we study this is that I'd love to get into the parable. Oh, I'm a parable type of brother, but uh, I don't want to spend much time on the parable today because it's this latter part of the scripture that I'm wanting to focus on. What you'll notice in this passage is that in Luke, you'll see that there are many a person who has come to follow Christ. Uh, and Luke actually points to a few women that are coming to follow Christ. We see Mary. Um, she had been delivered from these uh, demons that were inside of her. She had been healed by Christ. All right. Uh, we see uh, Joanna, Chooza's wife. She had been um, kind of in a high standard um, to be Herod's steward's wife. You have to have some type of status in the world, and especially in that period of the time. So for her to follow Christ and to give of her means uh, to change her comfortability, to change her daily schedule. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot. There's something motivating that type of passion. Paul, he writes about different things. Luke had been through different things. Barnes, all these different people that are doing things for God, for the cause of Christ. Uh, there's something that's motivating them. I don't want us to think that we're just doing our job by being believers because we have to consistently have something that motivates us. Some people have a title. Some people have a certain church. Some people have uh, a certain place that they go or a certain talent that they have. I appreciate all of those. But what I want to make sure that we understand is that the scriptures point to the fact that everybody in Christ has a responsibility. And that responsibility is to make sure that we are constantly seeking the truth, constantly seeking his word, not only to be inside of us, but to be understood by us. Family, let me show you something. Luke chapter eight. And come down with me where it says in verse eight, and some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, he who has ears, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But for others, they are in parables so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Family, we have to understand that the parable goes to those who believe and the parable goes to those who do not believe. For those who do believe, you have to make sure that as we study God's word, as we try our best to live the Christian life inside this world that we live in, guess what? We have to consistently seek God's word. And we have to not only seek it, but we have to do our best to seek how to apply it as well. You see, we can be great students of the gospel. We can study it, but we also have to make sure that we know how to properly proclaim it, properly, uh, properly advocate for it, properly apply it in our own lives so that we may show others that it is easy or it is doable at bare minimum. You'll also notice something that I see is down here in this verse 10. The secret, It's been given to you to know the secrets, but for others, they are in parables. So you have to understand that even though we are here, we have to keep that going because there are plenty of people who they can see that God is real, but they just can't see the point of God or Christ. You have people that can hear and they hear how great God is. They hear of his awesome power, uh, but they just can't listen with understanding to understand his greatness, to understand their place in it. And family, we have to be those people that do because we are separated. Remember, we are in Christ. So we can't blend in with the world. And this is a way that I see many of us blending in with the world. I'm speaking for myself as well. It gets very hard to speak up for Christ when we don't spend time studying it. It gets very hard to uh, let go of certain comfortabilities when we don't understand how detrimental they are to our spiritual well-being. Family, the things that are to come, we must be ready for in a discipleship type of fashion. Because for years, we've been able to just kind of go to church and, and just kind of be around and just kind of believe and, and be there because things were going well. But when things start to change and it's out of your control that they change, you still have to keep on living because God gives you breath. But you have to live with more of a purpose. You have to live more intentionally. You have to make sure that you kind of dot your I's and cross your T's a little bit more. 
Not just in uh, keeping away from sin, but staying on your toes from this great delusion that is coming. Staying on your toes from some of the things that will take us away from actually being focused on the true path of Christ. What I want to show you is some things right here, the hard heart, the shallow heart, the thorny heart, the good heart, all those hearts that you read about right here in Luke 8, they can be in the church and out of the church. Believers and non-believers can suffer from these hearts. So we have to make sure that we're striving, no matter where we are in those, for the good heart. If we're striving for the good heart and we start to understand that the secret is the different aspects of the arrival of God's kingdom, guess what? When you look out into the world, some of the top shows in the world some of the top music in the world, some of the top places to be, some of the top positions to hold, some of the lowest places to be, some of the uh, uh, most vile places to be, all these different places from the highest to the lowest here on this earth, they are not moving in the way that we read about in scripture as to be moving in the will of the Father. We can get caught up and swept up in either side of that, and we have to make sure that we are pulling our brothers and sisters from either side of it, straightening ourselves up, keeping from falling victim to either side of it, and walking in that one narrow path that is to the heavenly kingdom. Family, something that I also want to say, uh, or say is that uh, there's a distinct difference between hearers and doers. Now, family, don't get this uh, misunderstood. I'm not saying spend more time doing just to be doing, but the discipleship aspect versus the simply believing aspect. You know, demons know that God is real. There are plenty of people who believe in the power of God, but they may say that there's somebody else or they may claim to believe something else because they just don't want to give over. If I believe enough or if I believe in anything, I should give myself to it. So many of us may blindly believe, not recognizing how much we're supposed to actually give into God, not actually recognizing how much we're supposed to give over to the kingdom. The sacrifice is very real. I'm learning it myself. So when we study God's word and we understand the distinct difference in the discipleship aspect from just hearing or just believing and, and not really thinking about continuing and to strengthen that belief, what you'll find is that the redeemed are his redeemed. And so we must strap up like the redeemed. We must take arms against evil. We must take study against evil. Because the more that we sharpen our hearts and our minds to the will of the Father, the easier it'll be to fight for the Father. He continues to fight for us. He continues to give us resources, time, and opportunity to fight for him. And we must do that in ourselves, in our families, in our world. Okay? Let me talk to you about something else as well. Discipleship is not simply for the individual benefit. All right? The more you get into Christ and the more you study Christ, and the more you try to be like the true followers in spirit and in truth type of followers for Christ. Guess what? It's not going to just benefit you. So we're not going to spend a whole, whole bunch of time just studying and not sharing. We're not going to spend a whole, whole bunch of time just sharing and not studying. Family, we have to make sure that we get in there both ways. We have to get in this cycle. God has. We see it with Jesus. We have to pray. We have to study. We have to fellowship. We have to pray study and fellowship and worship and praise God. And we need to be doing this so much daily even. You see the daily uh, the daily yield in Acts that we got. We got souls baptized into Christ every single day. The weekly yield that we get here nowadays from Wednesdays to Sundays. We need to keep that going, especially as harder as the times get. I want you to understand that this uh, radical change that all these people had went through in Luke 8 to follow Jesus to this regard, the radical change that the 12 went through, the radical change that Paul went through, and all the believers or, or the followers of, uh, not of Paul, the followers of Christ, but Paul was leading them. These people gave a lot. And so we need to make sure that we understand what the cost truly is, okay? Believers can be like any of the soils, but notice there's this last verse that I want to read in verse 11. It goes like this, chapter 8, not verse 11, verse 15, I'm sorry. It says, as for that in the good soil, that is who we're trying to trying our best to be, right? They are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. Family, trust and believe, okay? Trust and believe that the more you get with God's word, the more you get with God's people, the more you pray, the more you meditate on these scriptures, the more you do your best to apply God's word to your life. Guess what, family? You're going to be bearing fruit. You're going to be producing. Just continue to be patient, long suffering, persevere. It's an everyday thing. 
It's going to be highs. It's going to be lows. It's going to be ups. It's going to be downs. But trust and believe because it's there for you. And I also want you to know and understand to hold it fast. Hold it tight. Don't let God's word go. Don't let the opportunity to be amongst God's people. Don't let the opportunity to meditate on God's word because of distractions. Hold it fast. Make it as valuable as it's supposed to be. I love you with the love of the Lord, family. And until we meet again, as I said, trust and believe. Trust in the promises of God. Believe in his word and things will be better. And if they don't get better, trust me, you got to keep living. I love you. Peace. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me, of weary ways or golden days before his face I see. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or me. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. As we close our service today, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful we have had this time to honor and glorify your holy name. We pray our worship today will strengthen us to draw close to you and your word. We pray for strength to maintain our focus on you and the hope for an eternal home. We pray for the sick, the lonely, and the downtrodden. Finally, we pray for opportunities to demonstrate the love to our fellow man as Christ would. In Christ's name, amen.